school bells ringing, engaging classes, opportunities at every corner, unforgettable school events, students constantly pushing themselves to be at their very best with the help of their teachers, and precious high school memories made all along the way. All of these notions remind us of one very specific place, the Charter School of Wilmington. Despite its popularity as an academic superpower, not much is known about the origins of the Charter School of Wilmington. But as the school continues to evolve and to thrive, it is important to know how it all began. Here is the history of the Charter School of Wilmington. In the very beginning, there were three schools in this building. The new and fresh-faced Charter School of Wilmington, Cap Kelly School of the Arts, which was relatively new as well, and the great Wilmington High. Wilmington High itself had quite the history. After being founded in 1894, it was initially racially segregated. However, it eventually became all-inclusive sometime in the 1950s. Like a great empire in a state of decline, the Wilmington High will see its final days as CSU High started emerging as a STEM-based institution. Indeed, during the school years between 1996 and 1998, Wilmington High started to phase out as a result of competition being at an all-time high and families within school districts preferring other schools. Nevertheless, Wilmington High was a very proud school and wanted to prove that it was separate and then from the charter school of Wilmington. It was being phased out. And mm -hmm. um, I, I remember they still had uh, the sports teams, I, I think, at least through my junior year, they were still in control of the sports programs. And the the... The, I mean, the sports programs were, were kind of also in decline, so there really wasn't anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. not, not a lot of not a lot of rah rah and going on. Yeah, um, it was the the next year, the ninety nine two thousand school year, where where charter really got its everything started to be, you know, all the sports programs were charter, and it was a, that was a big thing. I remember at the time. So. Why even was the Charter School of Wilmington founded in the first place? Well, according to documents from the first president himself, the school was founded to lower taxes, reduce crime rates, minimize population shifts, attract and retain businesses, develop a quality workforce, increase property values, and so on. People just don't understand that the whole idea was for the charter schools to show how traditional schools should operate. That was the purpose of the Charter School of Wilmington. We were to show how a school should operate on its own without the district telling you what to do, when to do, or how to do. It was for the school to satisfy the customer. The customer would be the parents. Former governor and current senator Tom Carper was also instrumental in the founding of our school. In fact, both of his boys graduated from CSW. Over, CSW was operated in association with six companies, AstraZeneca, Verizon, Delmarva, DuPont, Hercules, and Christiana Care. The early days of the Charter School of Wilmington. In the very beginning, Charter School of Wilmington pulled students from many different sorts of districts was very diverse when it came to ethnicities and social classes, and all its clubs and organizations were run by students, as they still do to this day. How has this school changed over the course of the years that you have been working here? We were a startup at the beginning. I mean, it was very much a startup company-ish. You know, you had not that many people working at the school, but everyone wearing a ton of different hats. So you ended up sometimes with people doing different jobs that really didn't go together. Mm -hmm. um, and then as opposed to now, we're established and mature and we have more staff, we offer more services and things are aligned in ways that make sense and run more smoothly. It started here in the fall of 2003. The school was, I don't know, five, six years old, something like that. Okay, uh, things that I know that were really different. There was no activity period at all. We had 
um, like the first two periods of the day were long, like the 80 minute blocks that we have now, and then they got progressively shorter as the day went on. The last two periods were only 30 minutes long. Um, dress code was much, 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 much more strict. Um, everybody had to wear a polo. Everybody had to have it totally tucked in. You had to have a belt on. Um, um, I'd say there was a, there was an over, overall vibe of excellence from the beginning. Um, and, uh, the definitely competitiveness, uh, in, in everything and grades and, and extracurricular activities. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I know some kids were actually working with teachers on, on projects that the teachers themselves were working on, you know, it, it was, oh. so it kind of had that, you know, that college feel to it. And it was, it was college prep to the max, most definitely. I, I think uh, AP classes were available, I think probably within the second year of its existence. Um, it, it was just, it reached for the stars. That's, that's kind of what, um, that's what I remember about, about charter from the, from the beginning. It was, it was just see how, see how far you can go. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it still is. Not much has changed there. <laughs> Even in its earliest days in the 90s and early 2000s, all sorts of incredible incidents have taken place here. About a month after I started, uh, Hillary Clinton, who then was first lady, uh, she actually came to visit the school um, oh. for a whole day. That was and gave, oh, gave you, a yeah. Did you meet her? I didn't get to meet her, but she gave a, a big speech. Mm -hmm. uh, um, in the gym in front of all the students uh, of both Charter and Cat Cab Calloway uh, was, yeah, just a very memorable moment. So um, did you see her speaking or? Yeah, yeah, we all saw her oh, speaking. Oh, wow. And, you she, know, she, she praised the charter school and, and what, what uh, it was trying to do. And, and it, it, was, it was just really awesome, obviously. I mean, we've also heard that Kanye West and Kim Kardashian visited like the cab and Carter <laughs> campus because he has family that go to UD, apparently. Oh, really? So, yeah, I guess all <laughs> the world has visited us, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Academics. As far as math goes, we always taught integrated math. So that was the majority of them. I know things that have been added since then are financial lit and mostly electives. The SAT prep course was added. Um, other than that, I would say they have pretty much stayed the same. He did group students in the classes of viability, and that was simply because if you put students of similar ability together, the class can move faster, farther, because you don't have some people who are really good keep being bored and you don't have some kids being lost because they're, they, they fall behind. And I did that, wanted to do the same thing at the charter school of Wilmington. And we used, and I think it's in the, the, the memory thing. I think we used the Terra Nova test to simply get an idea. It wasn't for admissions. It was to group the kids. And uh, when we did that, and these are actual numbers, the very first year we gave the test, which was in 1996, the uh, general average on that test was 65 percentile, and I was very happy with that. The second year, and this is a, these are real numbers, was 70 percentile. Obviously, I was even more happy. The third year, it was 75. So in three years' time, we were picking up, you know, higher qualified students, Again, we weren't excluding anybody. We were picking up students who had higher levels of ability. I told you it's a business. If you're picking up students of higher level ability, you better have your curriculum arranged because that's what you're doing for the kids. You got to get the curriculum to match the needs of the students <laughs> that are coming in. So you'll see that we upped the power of that curriculum and, and the easy way to explain it would be math. The original top math course was um, calculus AB. Uh, it was an AP course. So it was AP. It was the AB. Well, when we saw it going up to like 75, we made the top course BC. It, you know, it was the second level of an AP course for uh, calculus. However, 
we, <laughs> we noticed that that wasn't going to be good enough. So I went down to the University of Delaware and I asked them if they could send an instructor, a professor to the school to teach differential equations, which was a sophomore college credit or college From course. What I've heard, I, I've heard that the, the curriculum has gotten more, more rigorous and difficult <laughs> as the years have gone on. <laughs> like I, I, I definitely remember someone telling me um, the entrance exam to get in, uh, you know, a lot of us wouldn't have passed it <laughs> if it had been five, ten years later. Really? Yeah. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> a, lot of my, a lot of my friends and, and peers could tell you the same thing um, because of the preparation that we had. And then all the, the hard work we did uh, really helped when it was came time to applying to colleges. I can, I can say that. It's no wonder that the school has won so many awards, including first in the state and 15th in the nation. Clubs and activities. Historically, Charter has always offered a wide variety of activities which are both for students and led by the students. Examples include foreign exchange programs, cultural clubs and ethnic student alliances, charity organizations, STEM-based programs, competitive sports teams, and so on. The, there was a focus on uh, you, you guys are all going to build your own computers like that was oh. a, a focus of the computer club, which at, at the time just kind of blew my mind. I, the clubs were focused on on really uh, harnessing the students passion for technology and um, and science. Now, I have the students involved in mock trial competition. I have them involved with science Olympiad competition. They're involved with math competition. The lacrosse was huge. <laughs> um, everyone wanted to be on that team. Uh, our our soccer was good. Our our uh, track and field was really good. Um, and I know the the band, even though it was directed um, through Cab Calloway, uh, band was huge. Uh, like all, most of my best friends from Charter were in the band, uh, so that was that was big. School events at the Charter School of Wilmington. Always the hall decorating has been major, 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 major. Um, and, and well, Charter Thon certainly didn't happen. That's a, that's a newer event. Um, but I mean, we always had prom, homecoming, all of that. Another Charter School of Wilmington tradition would be Charter Thon. Charterthon is essentially a fundraising overnight party held on school grounds to raise money for the Be Positive Foundation or a Delaware-based charity organization aiming to battle childhood cancer. From around 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning, students can dance, eat, perform for their peers on stage, watch a movie, go swimming in the Cab and CSW pool, play games and sports, and hang out all together. At the end of the night, the total amount of money raised from ticket sales and donations is revealed. Students at CSW also often look forward to gym dances, where juniors choreograph and perform their own dance routines in groups after covering a unit on dance in gym class. The entire school always looks forward to viewing these sorts of performances. The annual Culture Day festivities, sports matches, and other fundraisers for clubs and charities have also always been present throughout the history of the Charter School of Wilmington. Another notable feature of CSW has been its series of principals. First, there was Dr. Ron Rousseau, or the founder of CSW, and the father of Ms. Fasella, the receptionist. Next came Mr. Walt J. Warner. Then there was Mr. Charles Baldwin, who later went on to become the first president of the Delaware Military Academy. Afterwards came Dr. Sam Paoli, who was around for roughly six years, who was then followed by Dr. James Capilupo, better known as Dr. Cap. And lastly, our current president is Dr. Reginald Johnson. With 25 years and counting, the future of the Charter School of Wilmington will continue to uphold academic excellence and continue to produce scientists, mathematicians, writers, creatives, and more, and even perhaps some Nobel Prize winners. 
The future of CSW lies in the hands of the exceptional students, supportive parents, and superb teachers and faculty, which are all why CSW has been incredibly successful all throughout its history. While the past 25 years of CSW have been a blessing to our community and state, it is also exciting to see what the future holds. As the past president, Dr. Cap used to say, Thank you.